and we're in London. Hi everybody, I'm in the car with James from the car. We're on our way home from the Royal Vauxhall Tavern here in London. Where are we now James? We're in uh, St. John's Wood. The lovely St. John's Wood, darlings. Let's see who's joining us. Let's see who's here first. I wonder if anybody from Brazil is here yet. Come to Brazil. Hey, Jesse. Uh, you look awesome. Oh, well, thank you. Um, I've got my, I was gonna say I've got my pheromone hair, but I actually brought this wig to Drag Race with me. I had this wig before I even met pheromone, um, before I even knew who she was. So I really can't say it's unfair. It just looks like candy floss and it, it's delicious like me. Hey, we've got, we've got, it's going to be, we're not going to be home for another probably 25 minutes, so we're going to have to wait to find out what, what happened on Celebrity Big Brother. Maybe you could drop me a couple of hints. Just, uh, you know, just outline it for me. Actually, I really don't mind surprises. James doesn't like surprises at all, do you? No. James does not like surprises. Even if it's something amazing, like I could win the lottery and buy a new house and it could be like a 14 bedroom mansion with a swimming pool and I could drive up to him and say, here are the keys, James. He'd be like, he'd be furious. You won the lottery. How? You know, it's just, you just, you do not like surprises. Like surprise birthday parties, they don't like them. I like controlled surprises. He likes, cause, cause just, he likes surprises that he knows about in advance. That kind of surprise. <laughs> Come to Peru. What, James? I'm disappointed. No. I mean, he likes presents. He likes gifts. Um, but on our 10th anniversary... <clears throat> oh, I'm being told... I'm being told to pipe down. Don't talk too much about James. He's a very private individual, James, from the car. He doesn't like surprises. Come to Ireland. Okay, where about in Ireland? Because I've been to... I've been to Belfast in uh, Northern Ireland, and I've been to Dublin in Ireland, and I'd like to go to other places in Ireland because my grandparents are from there, so I'd like to see more. I love your eyebrows. Why, thank you. Every now and then I see myself and I say, that bitch is 54 years old. How the hell does she do it? What kind of sheep placenta injections has she been using? Uh, you were robbed on drugs. I know I was. How Peppermint was allowed to survive wearing the worst outfit ever. I mean, if I had just been given a, the weekend to rest a little bit, my, my rib would have been a lot better and Peppermint or Trinity would have gone home. That lip sync would have been amazing. We would have got to see the two of them at the top of their game and one of them would have gone home. And then Trin then Eureka would have gone home and then I would have been in Snatch Game. So yes, I robbed. But things work out. As Michelle Visage says to me, everything happens for a reason. So I slapped her in the face and said, what's the reason for that? Ah, she didn't see that coming, did she? Um, do you use Botox? I beg your pardon. Look at my brows moving. Of course I use Botox. I'm 54 years old. Um, and my eye, James, <gasps> my eyebrows can move. Need I need more. Yeah, I just do here and here, but I don't do here. Because um, I have to, as a comedian, I gotta be able to you know, move my face, but I'm gonna have to move my eyebrows. Charlie for All Stars 4. Um, I would be 55 by the time that they film it. So, uh, <laughs> do, you get a, do you get a free TV license when you're 55 in the UK? Here in the UK, we have to pay for something called the TV license. You don't get to watch TV for free. You have to have a license. And if you don't have a license, um, they come around with like a little radar detector thing and they stand out in front of people's houses and they can tell if you're watching TV and then they can look at their database and see if you paid your TV license. And if you haven't paid your TV license, they like break down your front, front door like a SWAT team. Like they kick it in like fucking Navy SEALs abseiling down the side of a fence. And then they haul you off to Guantanamo. Basically that's what happens. And they, and they, and they, they take people to court. They make them... 
But if you're older, you get one for free. Or if you align your windows with tin foil, apparently they can't get the radio signal through. And then you can't hear the Martians talking about you. You know, because the Martians, they talk about you in their spaceships. Yeah. That's what they do in Germany. <laughs> uh, they have telly in Germany. They have TV in Germany. That's exactly what happens. See, I, I don't exaggerate. I don't make shit up. My name is not Aja. I don't make shit up. I love, I love Aja's stories. He is probably, probably one of the most entertaining queens on, on Drag Race. But you have to take everything he says with a grain of salt. I was watching on, hey, on Hey Queen, and he talked with a total straight face. That's what I love about him because it, it, it sounds, just, enough to be true. But he just makes them up on the spot. He was like, oh yeah, during the Charlie Hyde's Trinity lip sync, what you didn't see is I just walked up to Trinity and I handed her a tip. It's like, I know I wasn't moving, but I didn't see that. Never happened, but it, it's funny. He, he's probably, he probably more than any other drag queen, he makes me laugh the most. The most of any drag queen uh, on on my season. Oh, okay. And James Mansfield. James Mansfield is really funny. There are some queens that I love on that were on season nine that couldn't ad lib a fart after baked bean dinner. Not say any names. I'm at school, but you look amazing. So sad. Nan and I can't see you when you're here. <gasps> Why can't you, Montana? Montana, um, can we meet for coffee? Um, when are we in Brighton? Uh, April 15th, Sunday, April 15th. I'm at the, in case, in case you don't know, uh, Montana, come to Brighton. If you can't make it to, can't make it to see me in, in Sydney, Australia, get your nan. You took a train from, from Sydney to Melbourne to see me. Get a plane. Come see my show, A Dozen Divas, at the Comedia in Brighton. Tickets are on sale now. Uh... Charlie, can we meet for coffee? I'm down the road. Uh, I am in the car on my way home. We are about to get on the M1 heading north to St. Albans. Charlie, uh... See you on Sunday. Yes! See you on Sunday. On Sunday, I'm at, the, I'm at the Royal Vauxhall Tavern. I was at the Vauxhall Tavern tonight for Cancer is a Drag. And I'll be back there with a different show this Sunday. You know what I loved about the show tonight? It's a typical London. Everybody sang live. And there was even uh, somebody played the ukulele and sang live. And every single person sang live. One person did a little lip sync uh, as part of their thing, but it was clips. It was like a clip of my voice, a clip of Danny Beard's voice. What were some of the other clips in it? Oh, uh, Rose Garden. Rose Garden. Yeah, there were different like clips of some of the London acts that she edited in. It was very clever. Um, a bit reductive. I, I think I had done pretty much the same thing before, doing a telephone call. I don't know where she would have got that idea from. Shit. Maybe by maybe by someone who does does it better. Uh, what time on Sunday? Sunday, 5.30 p.m. at the Royal Vauxhall Tavern. Uh, you don't have to get tickets in advance. Um, if you are a member, I think it's like 5 or 6. And if you're not a member, um, uh, it's like 7 or 8. But it's, 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 it's really cheap. And uh, you get a free meet and greet. Hello. Cause, um, because it's my home bar, um, I always stick around after the show and hang out. And so, yeah, if you want to get a picture, come on down bring friends. It's Sunday Social is so chilled, so relaxed. Lots of people come for the first time and they just love it so much. They they tell me, "Oh, this is my first time." They're back the next week, the next week, the next week. They just it's a great venue. So, if you've never seen me live, that's the place to do it. Royal Box and Tavern Sunday at 5:30. I couldn't make it tonight. I felt pretty terrible this evening. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. Well, I'll give, a little, give you a little hug when I see you on Sunday, Sarah. Uh, uh, 
I'll see you outside after the show. Oh, we've got, I, I did hear that it was a possibility that some of the former contestants were coming into the house. Um, so I don't know if, if Andrew and Courtney got their um, reunion, but I had heard something about that that's what was, was going to happen. Former contestants were going to be coming in and competing for the contestants who were still in the house. Hello, Tracy Martell. It's been ages since we had a chat. It was so adorable. So uh, it is true as well that Andrew, Betty Swalix, and Courtney are going to be appearing together at the GAY bar. I mean, come on. That is amazing. Andrew, I'm going to be doing something with Ar um, Austin Armancost uh, next week. And I think I should try to get Austin in drag. Wouldn't that be fun? Courtney and... Courtney and Betty and me and Austin doing like a group number. <laughs> doing Waterloo, good and it's safe if I want it. What other, who has four? Oh, Spice Girls were four. Who else is four? Boys Zone was four. All Saints. All Saints. I'm going to go. Uh, you gonna go say goodnight, Weepka, or you gonna go see Betty Swalix and Courtney? I don't know what you're talking about. Uh, hey, gorgeous, you look fabulous. Thank you very much. That's that's very kind. Um, someone was very mean to me tonight. They were mean to me. They were mean to their elder. Some some kids just do not know their place. And James is always amazed at how I'm able to bite my tongue because I sometimes I want to just haul off and punch someone in the face and knee them in the balls and then stomp on their head. But I don't because I'm a lady. I'm a fucking lady. Yeah. Children who don't know that you have to give a certain amount of respect to a queen when she's in on the on the on her home stage at her home bar. Hello. Uh, hey Charlie, I love you so much. Your makeup is so. Why, thank you. Um, I was I, I did it in a rush tonight. Um, sometimes when you're in a rush. It go, looks a little bit wonky. And there are other times when you do it really, really quickly and you go, wow. And how did that look better than the times where I took three hours? How does that happen? Um, not all the time. They can speak to the dame that way. Yes, they're a bit, a bit disrespectful not knowing their place. By the way, <clears throat> is it water? I just said water. 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 Glass of water. See, when I'm with James, I say water. When I'm when I'm on stage, I almost always speak with an American accent. But at home, I say, James, could you get me a glass of water? I just cranked it up a little bit more than I don't do it quite that. Can I have a glass of water? Can I have a glass of James, you'd like a cup of tea? Darling. What's that on the floor? Is there a picture on the wall? Don't say that, no. Tomato. Tomato, darling. Uh, what are you saying, darling? I'm, I'm, are you saying I'm putting on an accent? I beg you. Louis, stop it. Don't be ridiculous, Louis. I, um, I love Sharon Osbourne. Sometimes I do Sharon Osbourne. But Stop it, Louis! You're being ridiculous. Oh, you've got such lovely chubby cheeks. Ozzy, where's Kelly? Charlie, you an inspiration to me, even though 
I'm 17, he's still... late, so amazing. You still are, I guess you're saying, so it's, thank you very much. Thank you. My job, in, in my main job is to entertain, um, and what I like to do is I like to entertain, and I like to engage people, and I like to connect. Like this part of just connecting, uh, this isn't the showbiz part, this is, I like to connect with the people that, that uh, I'm often entertaining. And if I inspire, well that's just gravy. That's never really my intent. I don't think about that. Um, but if it if it happens as a byproduct of just my entertaining and, and engaging and connecting with you all, well, I'll take it. I, I don't know whether I'm inspiring you to go, to, to go on a crime spree. <laughs> she's gonna say, she's gonna be called in front of the judge. He's like, why did you set that house on fire? Charlie inspired me. He looked hot. So I set a fire. Your face looks... Your face looks Ricky, a plastic surgeon. Really? Well, a plastic surgeon has never touched this face, so fuck you and your mother too. And your daddy. I've had Botox, darling, and the rest is makeup. Look at the picture of me with James on my Instagram wall 20 years ago. Yeah, plastic surgeon hadn't touched me then, and they still haven't touched me. They wear gloves. Uh, you're so... I'm inspired to get a glass of wine on Sunday. Yeah, you know what? I, uh... I usually have one glass of wine at the RVT because I don't drink the rest of the week. Usually, that's enough to get me buzzed, Sarah. So, and James has to roll his eyes going, she's slurring her words from one glass of Chardonnay. I love your makeup. You don't look a day over that photo. Oh, thank you. Somebody said to me tonight, you're old enough, you were at S Stonewall, weren't you? Honey, I was at Stonehenge. I played the after party, and Lady Bunny was the DJ. I should probably cut down on my drinking, either that or give up smoking. Oh, yeah, uh, one or the other. Joan Collins used to say she could have, if she went out for dinner, she could have uh, either a glass of wine or pudding, dessert. Um, but she couldn't have both. So some meals should have a... I don't know. What, what, what would Joan Collins have? Or she'd have a Knickerbocker Glory. She'd have a Knickerbocker style. Glory, yeah. Then she'd have the Fendi Burger thing. <laughs> and she'd have a tin of beans. And she'd, she'd polish it off for a jam roly pony. <laughs> Ice fingers, James? Oh, no, ice rings? No, don't get giddy. Ice rings. Have that. She'd have a, uh, what do you call it? A fondant fancy. A fondant fancy. Yeah, because she's right. fancy. Or a glass of... Vodka. Vodka. <laughs> a basic dry white basic wine. Basic dry white wine. Vodka. Hi to Brazil. Your makeup is beautiful. Thank you very much. What advice would you give to a 13-year-old who just started drag. Uh, uh, have fun. Play. Play. Uh, pr practice your makeup. You can always do your makeup, take a couple of pictures, and then analyze the pictures, and then try something different the next time. Find a look that works on you. Try lots of different looks. Have fun. And if you're going to become a performer, an entertainer, then any opportunity that you can to get up in front of an audience, audition for open mic nights, or if, you're, if your school has a talent show, get in front of an audience as much as you can. Don't be afraid to be original. And don't be, yeah, don't be afraid to be original. Don't be afraid to try things that other, do, do things that other people haven't done. Um, for me, one of the most boring things is when I go see a drag show and I see a skinny white boy doing lip singing to, and I am telling you, just, 
there's so many songs. There's every now and then there'll be a new queen that'll come onto the scene here in London, and they've got talent. But all they've done is they've watched all of the other girls that are on the circuit, like myself, and they've taken a song from me and a song from somebody, a song from, and they basically uh, they're just a little jukebox doing songs that everybody else is already doing. So find songs that you love, maybe an old Karen Carpenter song or um, a song that your mother used to sing to you when you were a kid, but bring something new to the, to, to the party. Find songs that aren't being currently done by your peers and maybe do, or maybe do a remix, or do it in a new way. Just bring something new to the party. Because we've seen people do impersonations of another person's act. We've actually seen the, the show and it's a new queen, she's new on the scene and it's like, oh my god, I hear, I've heard all those jokes before, and I remember who the person she stole it from had stolen it from they before. They have no idea. Yeah, well. they have no idea. And then they'll steal from me, and they'll do my jokes, they'll be at a, a, a show, and they'll be just before me, and they'll do a joke that James wrote. It's like, uh, hello? <laughs> so do, do, try to be original. Someone is being very observant tonight. Well, what can I say? We've got... Believe me, people message me. They tell me, oh, did you know that so-and-so was saying such and such? It's like, oh, okay. The thing is that James and I can write original material. We can write new stuff, so they can have it. They can use it. If they're too lazy, they can have it. Charlie, you never did any Lady Gaga and Madonna videos anymore. Why do you never... Because it's really hard to... Um, they take 30 or 40 hours to do one, and uh, I don't have 30, 40, 30 or 40 hours anymore. I'm always on planes and hotels, and you know what? I've pretty much said everything that I have to say about Madonna Lady Gaga at this point. Um, that, that there's nothing that is so pressing that I'm going to take 40 hours out of my week. Because there's all... I have to write the script, I have to... Um, make the sets, I have to make the costumes, I have to buy the latest wig that Madonna's wearing and have the latest look that Lady Gaga's wearing. And doing all that, I had a lot of fun doing it. We had a lot of fun doing that yeah. at, at the point that I was doing it all the time. But I wasn't traveling. And I'm never, I'm never in one city, you know, for more than a day or two. So I just don't have the time. But if you really enjoyed those videos, watch them again watch them again. But at this point, I'm, I'm enjoying doing, like, everything I did tonight on stage was all original material. Stuff about my time on Drag Race, things about my family, uh, the songs I sang were original songs. Uh, but I closed the song with Wonderful, we closed the show with Wonderful World. But I did material that I wrote, and uh, I felt like doing Madonna, Cher, Gaga, and stuff, I was, I was doing their material, their songs, their stuff, and... I'd rather be the best me than a second-rate Madonna or a second-rate Cher. Um, and with Chad Michaels in the world, I'm only a third-rate Cher. Uh, so, but I have the potential to be the best me. And if I don't do me, who is? Who's going to do me if I'm not doing me? You know, I, imagine if I got to 70 years old and I never did me. So, be I'm, the best. I've be, done you. Be the best. Yeah, James did me. Be the best you. That's my advice to the Queen. Who's 13? There's only one of you. Be the best version of you. Because you'd only make a second rate somebody else. I love that you're doing more you now. Yeah, me too. We've got. I mean, there was a transitional period at the um, at the Royal Vauxhall Tavern where I've been doing Candy Cane Baxter um, for a long time, and then I like was weeding her out. I've been doing Eljo. That you know that sort of wound down, and um, there were times when. <laughs> I'd be on stage with people like, who is she meant to be now? Who, is that Madonna? Is it Cher? Is it God? Like, who is, who is that? It was me. Me be me. And that's the reason I would put the Charlie name tag on. I know what, some people are like, why is she always have the name tag on? Because I had done Madonna, Cher, Gaga, Lana Del Rey. People are used to seeing this face in a different paint. That if they saw me on stage, you know, because they're drunk and whatever, um, they're like, is that, is that Lana Del Rey? Was that, oh, is that Miley? So, oh, she looks like Katy Perry. And it's like, no, it's Charlie. That's who I am. And that's the reason for the Charlie name tags. Because so many times, if I, if I was, 
you know, in the car looking like this and say, oh, wow, you look like, oh, you look like Lana Del Rey. Uh. Valentina, bellissima. Saludos de Nic Nicaragua. Mucho gusto, Nicaragua. I'm 15 and I think I want to do drag. My name, Lola Martinez. What are your words of wisdom for me as a baby queen? Love you. Well, same same thing. They all apply. Um, try to try to find a look that's yours. Um, I've seen because I do shows all over the world. I meet queens and I see tons of people coming to the shows um, that have done the makeup to look just like Miss Fame or Pearl or or uh, Trixie. Uh, you look out, you see. Oh, there's a Trixie. There's a Trixie. Oh, there's a you know Milk. Um, so they're try to try to have a, come up with a look that's your own. Trademark. Yeah, try to come up. With, Jackie B. Look that's all their own. Lady Bunny. You could recognize her a mile away. Um, Bianca. You recognize her a mile away. Coco Peru. Coco Peru has only ever had one wig, one look. That's her look, and you could recognize her a mile away. Uh, Suicide Nicks and Sherry Vine. Sure. Sherry Vine has a, has a very distinctive look, and she's in not much variation from it, and it's a signature in the same way that Liza Minnelli has always had that little black haircut. You recognize it from them. Some of the biggest stars in the world have basically had just one look, and they just, you know, Marilyn Monroe always basically looked like Marilyn Monroe. Um, she wasn't reinventing herself in the same way that Madonna has. Um, so there's nothing wrong with it. And then there are people that every time they go on stage, you know, Pearl, every, we did a tour with Pearl, eight cities, and every night Pearl looked totally different. And that's fine as well. But it's good to have a look that you can go back to. Like I have a signature blue wig with a lower eyelash that I go back to and it's boom. Everybody, you know, if somebody else did the blue wig with the lower eyelash, they'd say, oh, they're doing Charlie. So have a look that you can that you can call your own. There is a five uh, collage online. I just Jackie's Bianca's funny side. Yeah, instantly recognizable. Yeah. Um, when you become when you go to the Ringling Brothers and Barnum and Bailey Circus Clown College, it's a real thing. You learn to juggle and um, do magic and you know take pies to the face and walk on a tightrope and ride a unicycle. Um, when you learn to clown and you actually design your clown face, uh, are you a sad clown? Are you a happy clown? Do you, big, do you have a red nose? Do you have pink hair? They actually trademark, you have got to design a face and there's a book and it's got every clown's face ever with the way they did their eyebrows, did they do white face, did they, and every single clown, you've got to come up with your unique clown face, and then it's basically patented and trademarked, and so there'll never be two clowns in another city, if they're, if they're really good clown, they could just an amateur on the corner, um, does it count, so come up with your signature face, like a clown, and don't do Bianca, because that's taken, nobody wants Bianca's face, Bianca doesn't want her face, uh, they are internalized on eggs. Yeah. But listen, I gotta go. Um, my battery's about to die. It's been a pleasure to see you all. And you know that I love chatting with you. And I hope you all have a great night, a great weekend. And if you're in London this weekend, come to see me at the Royal Vauxhall Tavern. Bye. Oh, or, or in Brighton. I'll be in Brighton soon as well. See ya. Bye.